We are going to build an application called Image Analysis 2 using Next.js and GPT-40. We will talk more about GPT-40, but before that, let's look at the final project. When I click on the Get Started, I'm going to provide the source of the image and what I want to know more about the image. So here you can provide any image link. So I am going to copy one of these links and that is copy image address and back to the project. I'm going to paste that and I will say describe this image. And it has given me the description of the image. And I can ask a different question, for example, does this image contain a dog? So let's try out. Now let's see the results. And indeed, it says that no, this image does not appear to contain a dog. It shows a peaceful landscape with green fields, trees, and small buildings, which is true. In case you are new to this model called GPT-40, let's have a brief overview. GPT-40 is OpenAI's latest AI model announced during the recent Spring Update event. It builds upon the capabilities of GPT-4, introducing new server enhancements including faster response times, improved natural language understanding, and real-time multimodal capabilities. GPT-4.0 can process and generate content across text, images, and audio, making it a versatile tool for various applications. Now, let's look at some of the key improvements. One is about cost and speed. GPT-4.0 is twice as fast as GPT-4 table and is offered at half the cost. And also accessibility. It is available to both free and paid users, with free users getting access to GPT-4 level intelligence and paid users enjoying higher capacity limit. And also multimodal features. This model supports text, vision, and audio, allowing for more natural and intuitive interactions. For instance, it can participate in real-time voice conversations and interpret visual and audio input accurately. Lastly, enhanced interactions. GPT-40 can detect and respond to emotions, provide real-time translations, and support more natural human-like dialogue. Let's look at some of the red demo from the official website and definitely I'll provide you the link. Let's look at the first demo, which is this video. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? I can see it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up to shoot a video or maybe even a live stream. Yeah. In fact, we've got a new announcement to make. That's exciting. Announcements are always a big deal. Judging by the setup, it looks like it's going to be quite the professional production. Is this announcement related to OpenAI, perhaps? It is. And in fact, what if I were to say that you're related to the announcement, or that you are the announcement? Mm, me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? All right, guys, this is insane, right? We are going to use these capabilities, and that is vision and text, to develop our application. So, before we get into that, let's see what we are going to use. We are going to use Formic for form handling and React icons and Next.js for creating our application. But before that, unless you have an account with OpenAI, so if you search for OpenAI platform, click on the first search result. This is where we're going to get our API keys and also the documentation about the API. 
But before that, let's create our Next.js application. In case you are new to Next.js, then you can check my Next.js course. Otherwise, let's get started. So I have already created a folder called Next.js GPT-40 Image Analyzer. And let me show you the extensions I'm using in case you may have interest with. I'm using better comment for styling my comment and code spell checker and Codium AI for autocomplete, ES7 for scaffolding React component, Helium icon, power mode for fancy styling, and I'll show you as you move on. And my theme is called Tenacious Design Theme. And that is it for my extensions and the theme. Now that we have these ones, let's get into code. I'm going to create fresh Next.js application by copying this snippet and I'm going to open a terminal and then paste that and hit enter. It is asking for project name and since I have already created my project as that, I'm going to use period for that and then I'm going to hit enter. For this one, I'm going to accept the default configurations and it is installing our project for us. All right, I'm going to install all the packages we may need. The first one is Formic for form handling. And then we will install your package for form validation and react dash icons. Let's run the application by using npm run dev. All right, so let me copy the URL and then replace with this one. Now I can close these guys. So let's do some housekeeping. So back to the project. Inside the app and then the page here, I'm going to remove the default styling and I'm going to use H1. As you can see the fancy effect when I save the file, it is because of this extension called power mode, which is where is it? Which is this one. So in case you want to have the same effect, then you can install that extension. So let's continue. In the global.css, I'm going to remove the default CSS. Let's maintain the tearing CSS. Let me refresh and this is what we have. And for this project, we are going to use route handlers simply because we are going to use external API from OpenAI. So we are going to have endpoints that is going to talk to the OpenAI model. So in the app folder here, to be able to create an API, provide a folder by using a name called API. It must be API, otherwise it will not work. And inside, I'm going to have one folder called Vision. And you can use Image Analyzer. For me, I'm going to use Vision for that. And then inside, I'm going to have my first route, which is route.js. The name must be route, otherwise it will not work. So let's see how we can create a route in a JS application. And like I said that in case you want to learn more about Next.js, then you can check my Next.js course. But in case you are a student, then at this point you have all the skills. So how are we going to create the API endpoint? We are going to export async and then function. We're going to use the HTTP method as the name of the handler as post here. And the function goes like this and we will need next response to be able to send response back to the user from next server. All right. So in here, let's bring in try and catch at the moment. We are not using any open AI logic. So I'm going to return by saying new next response and then JSON dot stringify and then i'm gonna send this message as gpt40 all right now we have created our first endpoint and the path goes like this our base url for slash api for slash vision 
so how are we going to test this one and you can use postman but for me i'm going to use tender client let me clear my previous history and let's start from scratch so here i'm going to add a new request and i'm going to provide the http forward slash api forward slash vision that is the end point if you look at the folder structure remember nextjs uses firebase routing so here is going to be forward slash api forward slash vision and it's going to call this particular file and this file contain our logic by using post method so here if i select the method as post and send we have our endpoint being working now we are going to integrate the gpt40 model so let's get into the official documentation and that is the platform.openai.com so over here the first step is that let's have our api keys so click on that and then create new secret key for me i have one already which are these ones and make sure that you have some free credit if you click on the usage you can determine either you are having credit or not and for me i have some credit so in case you don't have one make sure to create a new account and openai will give you five dollars credit to begin with all right so now i have my api key let's get into the documentation by clicking on this docs and over here it says that introducing gpt 4.0 and that is their latest and fastest model which is also affordable and over here if you compare the models gpt 4.0 turbo and 3.5 let's look at the cost involved the input here is five dollars but for table it is 10 output 15 and output here is 30. this means that this one is cheaper as compared to this and also this one has more enhancement as compared to this one so let's explore the api for this one so to know more let's click on the vision which is this one and then let's scroll down here under the quick start in here we are going to provide image to the model to be analyzed and it says that images are made available to the model in two main ways by passing a link to the image or by passing the base 64 encoded image directly in the request but we are going to use the image link and this is the sample code so if you click on this one select node.js because that is what we are going to use and this is the code for that as you can see it is simple and easy but we are going to modify this logic to be able to use it in our nextjs application all right so next step is that let's install openai so back to the project shut down and clear the terminal and pmi and then openai i start let's wait all right it is done so let me run the application so let's copy the entire of this code and then back to our project i'm going to place it here as that now we are going to do some housekeeping first of all we are going to authenticate so here i'm going to bring this one up here that's the first step we need to import the open ai and then create instance of the open ai so next step is that we are going to authenticate and let me bring it up here and inside the open ai i'm gonna provide object and specify the api key at this point i believe you have your api keys so we are going to place it in the environment variable i'm going to have one file called dot env dot local and then i'm going to assign to what is called open ai he is equal to that and now back to the project i can access it on the process dot env dot open ai underscore key at this point we have been authenticated 
So we are going to modify this logic to suit our need. So to make our life easier, we are going to copy the logic in the function over here, which is this. And then back to the route here in the try, I'm going to paste that. So let's see what is going on over here. We are accessing the OpenAI instance by using chart.completions and access a method called create. And for the create, they pass in an object by specifying these properties. The first one is the model and we are going to use GPT-40. And then the messages. We are using the assistant API. So here, the row here is going to be user. And in the content, we're going to provide text and then the image. So the first one is going to be the text. But this text is going to be dynamic. For this one, the user can provide something like, do you see any red color in the image or what do you see in the image? So this text is going to be dynamic. This means that we are going to accept what the user is typing. And then we can access that one and that is a payload on what is called request. All right. So here to be able to access the payload, we are going to await the request. So to be able to access the payload is going to be await the request on that we have a method called JSON. In case you are familiar with Express, to be able to pass incoming JSON data, we use express.json or a package called body parser. It is the same thing when using NestJS. So here I will say text equal to that. So in here, we are going to replace this one with text. We are done with the first dynamic content. The next one is going to be the second query, and that is the image. The type here is image URL, and inside here, we are going to provide dynamic image. So here, remove this one, and we can access that one on the rec.json. So we are going to destructure and then access image URL. So we are going to assign to the image URL. And next step is that we are going to send the response. So instead of sending this one, we are going to send the response from OpenAI. And the response can be found on the response.choices and then accessing the first index. So copy this one and then back to the next response over here. I'm going to remove the message here and then pass in and start. And that is it, guys. So last step is that we are going to handle the error. So here we are going to return new response and then pass in the error message. All right, so let's try the endpoint to make sure that it is working. So in here, we are going to provide the text and I will say describe this image and then I'm going to provide the image URL. So in here, comma and then the image URL and the image URL, you can use any image of your choice. So I'm going to copy this one and then back here, paste that and send. And we have the response being returned as this. Now the API is working. What has left is that we are going to connect to the front end. So back to our NestJS application, I'm going to have one page called vision. So in the app folder here, I'm going to have vision as my folder and then the page as page.js. And we are going to use client components because we are going to handle a form. So here I'm going to scaffold the component and I will say vision. Let's make sure that this component is going to be rendered. So it's going to be forward slash vision. So back here, forward slash vision. And indeed it is working. 
so in here we are going to use client component therefore we have to use the directive as use client and let's bring in this import and that is use state use formic yup and these icons from react icons so we are going to have this internal state and i'm going to provide you as that we are going to check for loading error and then the response all right we are going to configure formic as form here by using use formic as an object I'm gonna specify the initial values as an object I'm gonna provide the text by default it is empty string and then the image it is img dash url and also by default it is empty and let's have some client side validations by using validation schema by using the job package dot object and then gonna specify this validations text it must be a string and then it is also required so we will say that text is required all right and let's have one for the image url as image url is supposed to be a string and then it must be url and in case the user is not providing valid url we will say that invalid url and it is also required and i will say image url is required all right so let's configure the actual form for this one we are going to ignore the styling at the end i'll provide you with the complete styling with the form so here div let me have h1 and i will say image analyzer and the form you're gonna have the first one is going to be text area and then provide this attribute name supposed to be text and we are going to bind formic with this input and we will provide in the value the unchange and others but formic has a method or property called get field props by spreading i have to assign use formic to formic as const formic is equal to that so on the formic we have these methods formic dot get field props we're going to provide in the initial value which is text here for that and then let's have one for the actual image so provide this is image url then the field props it is also image url and let me provide some placeholders for the text area i will say and then for the this is supposed to be input but not text area all right and provide placeholder all right and let's have the button all right so let's see what we have let me refresh and we have it as that without any css now let's implement the actual request so in the formic here we're gonna have on submit which is a callback function and then in here we have access to the values and that is what the user is typing in the form if you log the values you're gonna see that so let's bind the form by using on submit and pass in formic dot handle submit all right so moment of truth let me open the console and i will say describe and then let me provide any image url and get response and we have it as that but we have this warning and that is on the button we have to specify a type attribute called submit all right so let me try again and now we don't have the warning which is this one perfect so now that we have the payload it is time for us to make the actual request so 
we are going to use fetch API. And this is where we have the values from the form. So we are going to call the endpoint over here. So let's bring in try and catch. And then let's update the state and that is set loading. And then set response. It is also now over here. Now in the try, we are going to use fetch API and the endpoint is going to be forward slash API forward slash vision. Remember that is the endpoint. The forward slash ends over here and then the actual endpoint is API forward slash vision. All right. And then as the second argument, I'm going to provide in these properties by specifying the method, it is called post method. And then let's also send the headers and provide content type. And then let's send the body. So bring comma here and then the body, we are going to pass in the values from the form by passing as JSON dot stringify and pass in the values. And let's check in case we have the response and we can access that on the, let me assign to what is called response as rest is equal to await. And let's mark the function as async. And then in case we don't have rest dot okay, it means that something went wrong. So let me place the exclamation mark. In case we don't have OK property on the response, we know that something has been okayed. So we have to throw the error as new error. And we will say that failed to fetch the response. Then here we know that in case we have the response, we are going to convert the response to the rare object by using await response.json. That is how fetch behaves. So here const as data equal to that. Now we can update the response as set response and pass in the data. And then in case something goes wrong, we are going to set the error by passing in the error dot message. And let's have finally block and then set loading here to false. Let's display the response below the form here as response, which is equal to in case we have the response, then we are going to display that by using this GSX. Don't worry for the styling at the end, I'll provide you with the complete code with the CSS. Let's focus on the main logic. So here I will say response in case we have response dot message. Let me use optional chaining to avoid using end operator. In case we have response dot message dot content. That is what it to be returned from the backend. It means that we have the result. Therefore, we are going to inject p tag here and I will say all right and let's also display the image and it can be found in the form by using formic so here is going to be formic dot values dot image url in case we have that one let me provide a div here supposed to be supposed to be outside here in case we have that then we are going to display it in an image tag provide a div and then img provide the src and the value is the one from the four before we try out let's fix this mistake and that is the properties for the initial values. In here, we specified what is called image URL at the backend. But in the front end, we used different property. So let me change to that and then change to that. And for the input field, 
this one supposed to be as that and as that. Let me refresh and copy any image URL. For example, this one back to the project, paste that. And then in here, I will say describe. And then get the response and let's wait. And indeed, we have the response, but the image is not showing. Yeah, this one's supposed to be image URL. As that. All right, now, as you can see, so if I say, how many houses do you see in the image? And let's get the response. And it says that I see one house in the image, which is true. So I'm going to provide you with the complete code with the CSS. You can customize this one to suit your need. So in here, paste that. And this is what we have. Let me try for the last one. And let me use. No, I like nature. All right, so copy this back here paste that and then what do you see in this image well this one we used what is called image url so or i can change this one at the back end instead of this one i'm gonna use this all right so it will work let me try again and we got the response with the image all right so guys here ends this project but I'm going to provide you the component for the home page supposed to be in the page instead. All right. So save it. And this is what we have. All right, guys. So here ends this project. Thanks for watching.